Hello, everybody. And welcome back to a new AMA. Today, we're once again joined by Galexis. Uh, we're, going, we're going to be doing a little bit of a overview of the project and of the everything that they've created so far. Uh, we're also going to be taking this time to ask some additional questions just before we open the digits pool. Um, today, we're once again joined by uh, Andras and Christine. Um, which you guys have also been able to see in the last AMA, just like Herman. Uh, we do have two new faces. Perhaps we could do a very quick round of introductions before we get started with uh, with the AMA. Um, yeah, let's start with uh, Andras, just uh, for the people that didn't see the first AMA. Brief round of introductions, please get started. Uh, sure. My name is Andras Krzysztof. I'm a technologist and entrepreneur. Uh, I've been doing technology for a very long time. And uh, I did uh, some startups uh, before, successful startups before as well. I was the CTO of wiki.com, wiki.com, which was a, a, a community-based uh, video streaming platform that we built up from scratch and we sold it to Rakuten for $200 million back in 2010. And after that, three years later, I joined uh, the blockchain space and we started to, to develop products there as well. We built the first Bitcoin ETMs in Asia. We rolled our own layer one later on and we switched to Ethereum in 2015 when the Ethereum beta uh, came out. And this, uh, uh, and this uh, project is about Galaxis. Galaxis is a... Uh, is a distributed uh, uh, platform to create sustainable, unstoppable communities. Technically, a funding and monetization uh, framework that can help anybody or any entity with a community to monetize their own creativity. Perfect. Thank you. Christine, if you want, quick introduction as well. Hi, everyone. I'm going to be very fast so that you have even more time for questions. Uh, I'm Kristin. Uh, I'm the COO of Galaxis, uh, overseeing operations. And uh, I brought you the marketing team, which you really requested. So <laughs> I'm handing it over immediately. Perfect. Seth, that's you. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Seth, I'm the CMO here. Happy to be with you all today. Got about two years in blockchain experience. Um, worked my way up through Galaxis more as a generalist to, to help out with the, the marketing. And I'm really excited to uh, answer some questions and uh, yeah, let's get started. Perfect. We also have Shoya here. Quick introduction for you or- uh... Hello. Uh, nice to be here. I'm Shoya from Galaxis. Uh, I'm in the communication industry for like uh, 20 years. I'm specialized in data uh, communication and psychology, and I'm pretty much on, on focus with the business communication and helping out the team with an uh, overall approach and, and uh, managing things. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, guys. Um, yeah, so before we get started with the demo, uh, there's a couple of things to address that the community gave us a, some form of feedback uh, in a way uh, from the last AMA, uh, particularly about the marketing side of things and the token. Um, let's get started with the token. I think Seth and Andres could uh, chip in on this a little bit. Um, so the main question that we've gotten was, um, you know, the, 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 the feeling was created that maybe uh, the passion was mostly in the actual project and the development, but what about the token? Perhaps we could reiterate a little bit better um, how the value is going to be generated for the token and what the team is planning to do to actually get that value up and uh, get investors in. Sure. I'll get started and please, uh, uh, Seth, Christine and Shoya, uh, tell, let me know if I forget anything. So in order to make a token valuable, a lot of things has to come together. One is obviously the tokenomics. I do believe if you if you study our tokenomics, we have a, a very tight, very locked down, very pragmatic uh, uh, tokenomics, including the, the token releases, including the liquidity, including everything else. It is managed in a way that can ensure the best possible value for the token on the short term, in the midterm, on the long term as well. We even uh, mapped out the, the potential points where 
potentially uh, more tokens can hit the market because of uh, of vesting periods and everything else. And we are preparing with the appropriate marketing managers, uh, marketing uh, uh, marketing actions and announcements in order to make sure that we are even handling those. But a great tokenomics is definitely necessary, but it's not sufficient to make a project and the token successful. In order to make the token successful, there is only thing that can be done is we need to give it utility and we need to create traction, which we will cover right after this, because I think that would be the next question anyway. So <laughs> we, need, we need to have uh, the token basically the, the most important part of this project from many point of view. So we designed it and we let our tokenomics experts design the, the issuance rate, everything else down to the T. And then we have to make sure that the platform has traction and has real use, real utility for the token. Because once you have a platform where the token is actually can be and will be used for many, many uh, different things, and you've got traction, which will be ensured by the, by the next section, then that token has a very, very, very good chance to perform well. What I did for now, I'm, what I would like to do for now, I would like to show you a little bit of a demo, sort of a demo of the platform. And then after that demo, I have prepared a document which walks us through of some of the utilities of the token on the platform. Unfortunately, because since uh, our last AMA, we did not have too much time, I did not have time to make that document beautiful. So it's a Google Docs, it has illustrations, it has text, but it's not beautiful, but I think it shows what you, you need to see uh, for that. Very soon, once I can get my, my designer to look at the finished document, that is the actual document the, uh, which will be actually deploy, uh, deployed and posted on the website as well. So everybody will see the token utility of the platform. So if you would allow me, I would like to, to show you a little bit of what the platform can do in terms of uh, uh, utility. And after that, I will, I will walk you through of the document that actually shows how tokens will be very useful for everybody utilizing the platform. Okay. Okay. All that right. sounds Let great. Me... Can we uh, ju just before yeah, Andrew, just, good. just before you start uh, with your presentation, two things. First of all, we have to quickly check if you uh, are allowed to screen share. Uh, so we're yes, going to. That's uh, hmm. Yeah, I think I think I have it uh, enabled, so you can okay. double check if you have that. Uh, in the meantime. Um, could we quickly double back to the marketing team uh, just before we start the demo? Uh, now that they're all here, yeah. Understand? I cannot, cannot, uh, cannot, cannot, I cannot share. You cannot share. Okay. Only the host can share in this meeting. Yeah, that is not what we want. Uh, host and panelist. Okay, I think I now, yeah, I now enabled it. For yeah, you. So, I can do it. I can do it. Okay, okay but before that, ask yes. Me. Five minutes for the marketing uh, segment. Perfect. So uh, Seth and and I guess Shoya as well. Uh, could you now that you're here? Thank you guys for joining. Could you um, elaborate a little bit on what you guys have planned for the marketing roadmap? Uh, obviously, in the last AMA, it was very clear that uh, the 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 price and and the success of the token was very much tied to the uh, usage of the actual platform. So what have you guys? Uh, what do you guys have in store? What do you guys have in mind? Uh, to actually roll this stuff out uh, in, in the Web3 community and beyond, obviously. Sure, I'll be happy to start there and then show you if, you'll, if you want to fill in anything I miss. So we're strategically leveraging our network of about 600 or so projects and communities and founders, various KOLs to, uh, to create meaningful exposure uh, for this super exclusive Gen Zero NFT collection to start. So that's given a really limited uh, supply. This campaign was initially tailored towards top tier projects and communities through this process. 
And it's it's really ignited remarkable interest within our community and beyond. Uh, just to put it in context, we've recently surpassed 60,000 followers on Twitter, um, added about 3,800 new uh, people in our Discord this week. And we have about 300 active Zilli questers that are participating. So we we feel like we're on the right track with our partnerships. And of course, uh, we have some great ones. I'm not sure if Andras alluded to um, Diverse or any of our other strategic partners, but we have a great, solid network of people supporting us through this process. Um, as we plan to release the future generations of Galaxus cards, uh, our exposure strategy will expand. So we're going to be launching more comprehensive campaigns that are going to continue to echo throughout the NFT space. And of course, this is in conjunction with the, the public platform launch. I don't know if we've mentioned that yet. Uh, coming in in September, or excuse me, in early October with SmartCon, um, and then obviously the the TGE. So we have uh, a great um, plan to showcase the unique abilities of Galaxus platform and and continue establishing these strategic partnerships. Um, that we can't say enough great things about Chainlink and ENS in particular. They've been very supportive, and we're going to continue to leverage those relationships um, yeah. in targeting. Uh, Builders, creators, and and individuals that existing audiences. Um, there is also are... some uh, some uh, specific news from the chaining side. I just came back from Paris uh, last week, and I had uh, a dinner with our uh, chief advisor Sergey Nazarov, who is the the founder and owner of uh, of chaining. And when we told him that we are uh, want to release the platform in September. Then he said, no, don't release it in September, release it in October. On the 2nd of October, there will be uh, a smart, uh, SmartCon, which is the which is the Chainlink's great conference. Uh, it's going to be in Barcelona, two days. And he said, do it on SmartCon, make SmartCon the launch event for the, for the Galaxy's platform. And then we will put Chainlink's whole marketing and uh, and community outreach behind it. So it's not only us that we are working with, uh, with very good marketing partners and actually engaging a lot of new communities. I mean, we have a huge number of people joining our Discord uh, every day. Again, uh, Twitter just surpassed 60,000 uh, uh, users. Is it still called Twitter? Anyway, uh, and... Uh, now we have the commitment of Chainlink as well from the marketing side and from the community side as well. It's a, I don't really want to talk about it yet, but Chainlink is going to be much more involved and actually going to bring a lot of communities on the platform on its own. And then we did not even talk about marketing. But I don't want to get you the details because uh, I don't want to. Uh, uh, I don't want to uh, talk about it uh, too early. Also, we are planning uh, uh, a drop that was just decided that is going to happen in early October, right around our launch. I cannot disclose the name but it's going to be uh, the the final and greatest drop of uh, of the person who shall not be named uh, and we are also and we are also talking with uh, our connections with chainlink and with our connections with with diverse about one or two very large launch partners who are going to be launching communities on Galaxies at the launch. So from this point of view, I think we are going to be very well covered from, from every point of view. And we've got a very, very, very strong lineup all the way up to the launch. Okay. Well, thank you, Andres. Thank you, Seth, for this. That's definitely uh, a lot more clarity there. Uh, Shoya, would you like to uh, to say anything on the, on the yes, marketing just front? Two, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Just two sentences here. So strategically, we are applying a network-based uh, communication. We are targeting Web3 and Web2 uh, hubs 
this way we can uh, grow exponentially. So this is a mathematical model, uh, which it's proved to be like one way to success. Success, we optimize our energy, we optimize our resources, we go into the hubs and through these hubs, we can reach out uh, masses. And this is one of the keys of our communication because we are cost effective, uh, we are uh, resource effective, and we can reach out to, to uh, more people. Education, uh, it's very important from our side because if we would target only Web3 people, that would mean that that's a, a small niche. We want to open up our platform and make it available for Web2 people. This needs a certain level of uh, education, but this is why we are planning educational videos, tutorial use cases. And, and because Galaxis has this um, traction with working with so many individual projects, we like we see the ups and the downs and we can guide these new people who would like to onboard the communities with our actual uh, industry, industry knowledge. And especially with Chainlink and these industry experts, it's like, uh, the whole Web3 community will embrace the Web2 people and we will bring mm -hmm. this uh, new new technology here. And by the way, this is the only way to move forward. I think we are kind of getting depleting the uh, the potentials in the existing Web3 community. We need to make this technology approachable to, to any kind of communities uh, in existence. And that is, that is what... Uh, Galaxies was meant to be doing. That's why we have all the web interfaces and everything else. So you can create your community in the same way as almost the same way as you would create a, a standard uh, uh, account on, on, let's say, Patreon. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Yeah, perfect. So thank you, guys. Next. Let's, um, yeah, just to be mindful of everybody's time, uh, thank you for the for the marketing uh, zoom in. Let's go ahead and uh, get started with the presentation then. Is that all right, Craig? Uh, I will make it very short. Um, so, so just give me a second. Let me let me make sure that I'm sharing the right thing. Yeah, no worries. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. So, okay, okay. I think I am done. I am I am ready. So let me share. Let me see how I'm going to share my screen. I am at the Okay. That's the green button. Just <laughs> okay. You can see it, right? Yes. Okay, so basically this is the deck that I don't want to go through very, uh, very, very, um, uh, very um, in too much detail. Basically it talks about the strategic partner, our lead advisor, how they have another strategic partner, ENS, uh, the, the, the many, many, many projects that we did uh, over the last uh, two and a half years, including uh, dynamic NFTs for the Lamello Bowl in 2021, giving away 27 CryptoPunks to our community, giving away CryptoPunks, 27. That was fun. Uh, to our community, worked with Wakilomer, worked with the MBA, worked with Colibats, worked with a lot of different projects and implemented a lot of pieces of technology. But what I'm actually want to talk about is today is what is actually, what is this? What is the platform? What you can do on it? So what you can see here is that you as a creator, you as a community creator can onboard yourself and the community in three very simple steps for uh, on Galaxies. One is you create your membership card with a very simple web interface. Basically, these membership cards are NFTs that can be hyper utilized. These are NFTs that you can drop all kinds of utilities that make sense for your particular community. And I will show you an example in, in just a minute. So you create your membership cards that can be owned by your community members. You add things to it that make sense for your community. And then you enable them to support the project, which we will talk about later. And then you make it all useful and engaging in your community space. The community space is a set of web-based token gate and web applications that creates immediate engagement and utility for your membership cards as well. I will show you two examples of that as well. So first of all, create your membership cards via a simple web interface, and then you add meaningful utilities to it. What is meaningful utility mean? I will show you one collection that was, it's called the GRD collection. 
that was actually created with the alpha version of the platform about a year ago. The two artists are pretty much uh, industry veterans in terms of sci-fi and fantasy art, but they are completely analog. They are not web three people. They are barely web two people also. Yet, with our help, they were able to put together their membership cards. And what you see here is a demo of the membership card. You can see that it's rather dynamic. You can turn it around. This looks nice. But also what you see on the top right corner are the different utility bits that they decided to add to the card. There are much more than this, but these are the ones that uh, that went onto these cards. I'm going to go through uh, the top three, I think, very quickly. One is a physical redeem. If you have a membership card with a physical redeem utility trade, you can put in your name, your, your address, your city, zip code, everything, and then you can submit it. And once you submitted it, you can, uh, you can, in this case, you can redeem some of these drawings or paintings. These are real drawings and paintings that was created by this artist. And once you redeemed, once you claimed your, your physical redeem, this uh, utility trait will get burned from your NFT or membership card because nobody should be able to, to redeem a physical object more than once. So whoever owns this particular membership card will be able to get the traits and perks on the card, and they can actually engage with them. The second one I wanted to quickly go through is an online meeting. This also makes sense in all different kinds of communities. Uh, so if you have an online meeting trait, for example, you can uh, pick a predetermined time and date and book a meeting with the artist. Then you will have a link delivered to you, and you will be able to talk with the artist for one hour. They say, basically, you supported us, we're going to give you one hour of our lives. You can do whatever you want with it, play us guitar, ask us questions, or ask us to draw you, draw you something or draw you. And that is basically what they are promising with this online meeting trade. Obviously, for different communities, this can be used very differently. For example, we are working with some sports teams where online meeting trades will be used as like meet and greet teams to meet with a particular uh, team member or, or even more multiple uh, team members. And But even we are seeing people who are planning to use the online meeting trade as a way to, to, uh, to get job, uh, get work for themselves. We've got experts who wants to use uh, these membership cards and purely issue them with an online meeting trade and anybody who wants to hire them they need to buy one of the cards and, and engage with the online meeting trade so in this way they can actually monetize their own time by talking uh, by talking with people another one the last one that i want to show you this is a very simple it's an autograph trade if you've got one of these you can send a message to the artist in this case i can send my name or whatever i want and then they will see it on their interface and they can sign it on their on their phone so you will get your own membership card hand signed potentially with a with a message for you by the artist or by the celebrity by the by the athlete or uh, or or somebody else and i Think yes, I have it open. So this is one of the now we are on OpenSea. So this is one of the actual GRD cards in the wide on OpenSea. And as you can see, it is actually even on OpenSea, very dynamic. And even on OpenSea, you can actually see the badges and potential utility trace that is on it. And it all works. And also you can see the um, the, the integration ERC20 tokens. And what you see here is that this card actually had a redeemable uh, autograph trait, which was redeemed by the person who owned this NFT. And now it has the signature of the artist. So that is basically the membership card. This is the type of membership card that you can put together on the platform and issue it to your community. And then you can drop all different kinds of stuff on it that makes sense for your particular community. So this basically covers uh, the first two, uh, first two parts. You can create your membership cards and you can add meaningful utilities to it. 
The third part is the is the community space, extending the community space with engagements. I will cover that right now. One of the things that, uh, that you can do in your community space to, for example, engage your community members with sticker books. Sticker books are things that we all or most of us played when we were kids. You know, when you when you get like this bubble gum and from the wrapper you get a sticker and you from the Sarah you get a sticker and you can you could you need had to use your stickers to put it into a small book and then when you filled your your book with the stickers properly uh, uh, placed then you had to mail it in somewhere and you get your reward a plastic whistle or whatever. But basically, sticker books works the same way. You create your own collection, and based on your own collection or own membership card, based on the based on the visual traits and the utility traits on that, you can specify a sticker book. For example, in this case, what you see this on the screen is uh, is a collection of the fifteen main characters of the GRD collection: five girls, five dragons, five robots. And if you collect them all, you can submit them and you will be able to get the reward, whatever the sticker book is going to get you, which can be like a special trade, a special perk, or even like an ERC20 uh, coupon. So this is one of the type of engagements, many more coming, that you can deploy and engage your community with. The other one that I can show, show you, I need to quickly go to Galaxy's website, is, um, and I'm going to start this video, and I'm going to seek into it because I'm only interested in the last 15 seconds, is that once you created your own collection, you can deploy your own marketplace. Your own marketplace where only your membership cards and utility trades can be uh, can be traded. It can be they can be bought, they can be sold, they can be offered and offered accepted, and uh, everything can work uh, based on your own collection. And that is a marketplace that is deployed for you, and this is an exclusive marketplace for your collection or your community. These are the kind of modules that you will be able to deploy from the community space. So very quickly back to the uh, back to this uh, this one page, you create your membership card, you add stuff to it, redeemables, discount coupons, uh, online meetings, uh, visual traits, perks, whatever that makes sense for your community. And then you make it all usable and engaging in the community space by deploying different gamifications and, uh, and your own marketplace. So this is a, a very, very quick overview of, uh, of how the Galaxy's platform will work in, uh, um, in, in general. Now, if you still have time, I would like to quickly go through and see how the GLX token is actually integrated with all the membership cards on the Galaxy's platform. Because I think this is super important. And I dare to say that is, is, is rather smart if I, if I, if I am allowed to, uh, to, to kind of uh, uh, say that about my own project. But, uh, but let me just show you. And again, uh, uh, OK. So this is the document. Again, this, this doesn't look very well, but I think it covers the, uh, the important parts. So the Galaxy's ecosystem, the Galaxy's ecosystem consists of many independent separate communities. So you don't need the Galaxy's card to be uh, part of the Galaxy's ecosystem. As you can see, you may get a GRD card, then you are part of the GRD community. You can get a, a Link Marine card and you will be part of the Link Paris community or the Tokaido Cats community or the Ether Cards community. And I'm sorry, I did not have more time to put more types uh, here. But basically, these are the type of cards, membership cards that you can create uh, uh, on the platform. So the cards can be very different uh, visually and, and, every, and what kind of utilities they have on it. But they are also have a lot of similarities. They are all hyper-utilized NFTs benefiting from the Galaxy's framework. They can hold utility trays, discount coupons, dig digital and physical redeemables, online meetings, power-ups, and the hundreds of more. 
I have a big um, uh, spreadsheet with what is coming. I can uh, I can show it to you maybe on a on a different meeting, and also they can be used in community engagement in governance, gaming, and staking. We can talk about staking at the very end. In order to enable the, uh, of the above, the membership card are integrated with ERC twenty tokens with GLX. GLX allows each community to operate their own economy. So basically, each membership card of each community on Galaxies is, is, uh, is works like a top-up card. You've got one of the membership cards and you top it up with GLX and the GLX number will be displayed on that. And based on the GLX, you will be able to utilize the features of the card. Uh, there is a lot of details to it, but basically uh, every time when a utility trade, for example, a physical beam is used, the card will have to have a certain amount of balance, and from that balance, the the cost of using the trade is uh, is deduced. For example, uh, very quickly, and this is just an example again, if we are, if you are talking about a physical redeemable, it may cost fifty GLX to redeem it because you can you can say that in order to because you are redeeming something that is a physical object, somebody needs to wrap it, they need to mail it, they need to send it to you, so it, there are costs involved. And in this way, the project creator can recover some of the cost. For other other uh, uh, trades, for example, digital redeemable or, or whatever, it can be zero. It doesn't have to cost anything. Also, very similarly, when the card is moved, there is a royalty that is being paid the next time somebody is using any trades on the card. This is, if you think about it, very smart because in this way, we can, we can separate royalties from exchanges and royalties can be, can be requested and received independently of what exchange of any exchange, whether any exchange was used. We can talk about it, talk a lot more about it, but basically the main thing, this is the only system where it is possible to, to charge a royalty on a card, on an NFT that in a way that is completely independent of any exchange. And I think this is very important and going to be very important in the future even. So what is, uh, what is the most important uh, uh, question is, what happens with the GLX that is being paid on the card because the utility trade was used or a game was used or, or the card was transferred? That will go into the community treasury. So it's going to be uh, something that uh, the community, the whole community of that particular community will have very important um, uh, influence on what happens with this. Right now, this is, this is all just an example. Uh, one of the, in this example, the owner of the community gets 35%, the community wallet gets 30% of all of that that was going, was paid uh, from the cards. Galaxies itself has 5%. This is our cost for running the stuff for you. And uh, in this example, 10% gets burned. So there is a constant uh, 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 supply of GLX being taken out from the market. In this way, we can, uh, we can create a community treasury in a community wallet that can actually be utilized by the community for a lot of different things. I, what I, but what I also want to talk about lastly, about the two staking mechanisms uh, that, uh, that are going to be on the community cards. Let me quickly switch back to, uh, to this one uh, and I can show it to you here if it loads, there we go. So one of the ways of staking your community card on, on, in a community uh, staking a community card in a community means that you charge it up with certain amount of GLX tokens and you lock it up to your community. You still own it, but you make it technically so bound. So you say, I'm going to want to stay part of this community. I don't want to leave. I don't want to sell my card. So I, I, I stake my card for a certain amount of time. The more community members stake their card for their community, the higher the community's ranking will be on the leaderboard of the, com of the communities in grand total. And that will be one of the most important factors that affects what 
kind of grants the community is going to get um, from Galaxy itself. If I may just uh, uh, dial, oh no, I need to go down. Uh, go down for a second. You can see that this uh, dark brown, the, basically the biggest uh, slice of the pie is the, is the ecosystem grants. So this is the part of the, of, the, of, the, of the tokenomics that is over the years will be used to incentivize communities. So in this way, there are ways that we can, we can incentivize communities to commit themselves for community members to commit themselves for their community and staking their membership card and GLX in the process, basically uh, creating a higher standing for their community and also taking out quite a bit of GLX from the market. There is another type of staking though that is, that is coming up, which is, I think it's rather interesting. We have been asked by many communities onboarding that how could we enable them to issue their own token. Uh, this is very contra, uh, counter intuitive because if you would let people to if, communities to issue their own token, that would hurt GLX, right? So there is a good solution that we came up with. The plan is that if the community member members permanently lock a certain amount of cards with a certain amount of GLX tokens, right now it says uh, 100K worth of GLX, but this can change in the future, then they can take a vote and based on that vote, they can decide to issue their own token. So for example, just as an example, the GRD community may look up enough cards with enough GLX tokens to to hit that 100K, uh, 100K limit, and that unlocks their feature to decide whether they want to issue their own token as well. That token will be backed by the locked uh, GLX. A lot of GLX will be taken out of the market uh, with this, and the, everything that was deployed for, the, for that particular community, their marketplace, their membership upgrades, their payment methods, their royalties, the, the payments on the card will switch to their own token. So in this way, we can have a lot of GLX logged up and, uh, and provide the communities uh, a way to, uh, to create their own uh, community cards. I'm sorry, I talked a lot, but I just wanted to show you how important it is for us to create a, a token, a token utility that makes complete sense with the platform that is coming up and how important it is that uh, we, can, uh, we can have, if the traction is sufficiently uh, enough, we can have thousands of, thousands of communities with thousands of membership cards, each of them topped up with GLX because they're going to need it in order to utilize their own community to the fullest. So this is the part and this is uh, the presentation that, uh, that, I wanted to, uh, that what I wanted to give. And I hope this helped a little bit to understand what is, uh, uh, what is coming uh, for Galaxies and how we are planning to make the GLX token as worthwhile as uh, to make it as worthwhile as possible mm -hmm. definitely okay <clears throat> thank you andres for this presentation it was very uh, very helpful herman uh, do you have any questions uh, about this after you've seen it uh yeah well um a question that i have is um looking at the gaelic uh GLX token what um how important is it for uh, Galaxis as a project itself. Uh, um, uh, looking at how much revenue do you need to yeah to become profitable at the end, because I think at the end you want to have a profitable uh, organization or project. Uh, so, um, what is it? Where does the main stream of revenue come is coming from? Uh, is it from projects that pay because they can use it 
the the platform or is it by uh, the glx token uh, that uh, that is used that is uh, i believe that the two are the same the projects pay the GLX token to use the platform. Am I? I might be misunderstanding you. Apologize for that. But okay. I do well, believe. Maybe I can. I can clear up. Uh, yes, please, please, please. What I, what I, what I, what I'm asking is, um, the the revenue for the platform for Galaxy mm -hmm. is that coming from. Uh, another source like eh, from an, an, a community who's paying like a usdt usdc whatever or I see. is it directly coming from the token yeah right now it is coming from uh, projects or communities paying us cash usdc you name it yeah Be mm -hmm. because that is this that has been the state uh, status for uh, since the beginning of the project this is how we do our big, uh, big job. NBA paid us. All the people we engage them, we engage with, they paid us. But uh -huh. moving on, we believe the only way to scale is via the platform. The only way to actually make it really big is via the platform. We can only service X number of clients per month, and that X is a very small number. But if the platform is operational, we should be able to have 10,000 communities there with a thousand member in each community. If we get there, those small 5% or even less uh, uh, percentages that we're going to take from the transactions uh, of the people is going to surpass our revenue by mm -hmm. a lot. So on the long term, we do believe that the only winning strategy is to make the platform as good as possible, make it technically free, don't quote me on this, but very, very cheap for a community or a community creator to onboard and uh, give them ways so their community can support them. And when their community supports them, we take 5% of that, at least uh, as of now. And on the long term, I think that 5% will, will be much more than whatever we could get from individual clients ever. Just, yeah, just the standard fee or whatever. Yeah. 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 Okay. So yeah. right now, USDC, and don't get me wrong, we will still work with large uh, clients, large, uh, large players when they want something, a white glove service, a special feature, which is not part of the platform. We will work with them and we will, and they will pay us. And then we will uh -huh. take that new feature that we develop uh, for them and make it part of the platform so everybody can use it after that. But uh -huh. that is, is not going to go up in, in, in terms of amount of money. On the other hand, a revenue from a platform which is which is uh, which has big traction has the potential to go up. Okay, okay, and and uh, say so looking at the time schedule. Um, yeah. How much time do you think you guys need to to have enough communities on board? This is, uh, this is uh, a question that uh, we have been discussing a lot, but uh, even my best guess is, as you know, is as much science fiction uh, as not. There is no way to, to get, uh, uh, get an exact answer to this. I believe if we, if we uh, take and utilize the full support of our partners, we would need about two years. Okay. But again. 
No, I understand that, but yeah. I can imagine that that you have for a plan that you make, uh, say, yes. a worst case, a yeah. normal case, best case scenario, something like yeah. that. So that's yeah. why I'm interested in just to yeah. have a more an idea about where you are thinking about. Yeah, yeah, it's so, uh, it it. I think two years is reasonable if you have a bull market. It's uh, it's two months. Uh, <laughs> but it is but it is also possible and you need you know this that uh, mm -hmm. if we cannot change the sentiment of people thinking that just be because something is called nft it is speculation so web two people stay away web one people stay away because of that then it could be never and if anybody mm -hmm. tells you differently they are lying just one one thought here because uh, if we if we look around what's happening in the web2 space so there are lots of problems because uh, uh businesses uh, losing their uh, communities because of yeah. algorithm changes the the reaches drop uh, they have lots of issues because uh, uh the, the data leakage there are the uh, new type of com consumers raising who are aware about their, their data they are aware about sustainability so the gen z's are like a massive target audience for us who want to do business in a different way. So our platform, the, the Galaxy's ecosystem with this sustainability built in with a very good business model, it's like a, a open arms for all these Gen Zs then, and those who are, uh, how, how you say, so way much younger than us. And and for Thank them, you. this could be sort of new Facebook without the, the, the data issues, without all the, the restrictions, because they want to own something, they want to to be part of something. So we are like starting a, a, a new way of doing businesses and, and a yeah. new way of, of, of building uh, economies. Do, yeah, do very get that. Do, yeah. Two very quick thing, if I may just add. One is that um, that uh, the platform is built in a way that uh, there is no data collected on the committee members. So we don't care, as I usually say, we don't care who is behind that card. It could be a man, a woman, an AI, or six threats in a trench coat. It doesn't matter. We don't care. As long as they own the card, they can use the platform. The second one is that we actually talked with uh, um, um, a basketball team. I don't want to say where and when. We will know about it later. Mm -hmm. And they said that they actually experimented with. They say, okay, at the end of the game, scan here to get your your uh, digital collectible. Nobody scanned. Next game, he said, scan here to get your NFT. Wow. <laughs> they, yeah. Actually, uh -huh. a lot of them was claimed. So there is a lot of hope, especially in the actual areas where digital uh, where uh, collectible cars are actually heavily used in the sports and other arenas where people are, are accustomed to the thing and they can say, okay, this is the same thing just in a digital, digital form and I can actually own it. Nobody can take it from me. And yeah. once people realize it, that is the time for us. Yeah. Yeah, get that. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. And for, uh, yeah, for me, one question left. We are now a digital community as well, investment community. How how do you see uh, the Galaxis pl platform uh, uh, as an advantage for Digits Club? Could Digits Club be a customer of Galaxis? As long as there are things of uh, Digit Club, Digit Club community members that they appreciate and uh, if you can provide them those things and those things can be owned by them, I think there is absolutely a possibility for that. I can, I can give you quite a, few, quite a few use cases. At the very beginning when we started this, uh, this whole thing, we That's why I'm asking. Yeah. yeah, we worked on an educational platform where uh, NFTs were used to, uh, to give uh, the, the, the members who created uh, to help to create a course, the material and everything else, they got an NFT that could be used to actually get them a portion of the profit from that course that came in. 
So mm -hmm. there is a lot more to it that can be done, especially with the ERC-20 integration. That money can come from somewhere and can be put into the community splitter and split to the right people. So there's a lot of ways how um, an investment club can actually use it. And uh, then I don't even want to get into details. I want to, I want to listen to you what exactly you think you need it. And based on that, I can tell you in what ways we can actually provide that from the platform. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Right. Okay, guys. I think uh, we just about covered everything. Went over the marketing, token utility, did the demo. I didn't see any community questions coming in, so that means that they're all satisfied mm -hmm. and they have asked everything they needed to ask. Uh, Herman is all... Quite fired all of his questions away. So uh, I think we're all good for tonight, guys. Thank you so much <laughs> for coming on again uh, for a second and time, giving us a demo. Really appreciate that. Very helpful. Absolutely. Very helpful. Thank you. Any question can, comes through or any feedback comes through, please let us know. We would be more than happy to respond to it. Will do. Well, absolutely. I know, that, I know that we have a, a complex project, but uh, you can see that it's very, very well thought through. And uh, we have also the experience behind us. So we know where we are going. Andres is our, our leader and visionary. So we are going to, in the right direction. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, you guys are uh, you guys are a great team for sure. And I really love the demo. It looks great. So uh, thank you very yeah, much. Uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's stay in touch. And uh, thank you guys for thank coming you very on much. again. And uh, have a lovely evening, everybody then. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye. See you later, everyone.